The town of Derry, Maine has a secret. Every 20 or so years, a mysterious being comes from out the pipes and decides to prey on its children. This is the game It, the Evil Below by the OP, or USAopoly. In this game, you're gonna be playing as children from Derry, Maine, and you're attempting to stop the evil being from consuming children and forcing it to go back into its slumber. Can you succeed? I don't know, we'll find out. Let's take a look down below at everything you get and how to play the game. So here we have it, Evil Below, and everything included in the game. And as you can see, there's quite a lot. First of all, you're going to have the different characters from the Losers Club, and it includes pretty much all of them. There's Stan and Ben and Richie, Eddie and Bill and Bev, and even Mike down there. Uh, and each of them are going to have their own HP, as well as their own passive abilities. So every character has a unique active player ability. And then you've got the turn steps down here that explains how a turn works. This is the board for the game and where you're going to be placing all the characters, as well as Pennywise the Clown, who starts in the middle. Each player that is playing the game is going to start in their colored space. And this is basically Dairy Main here. you got the Barons, you've got the house on Newbolt Street, this is Keen's Pharmacy, it's only water, the town square, the sand pipe, the quality meets butcher shop, and then Bev's apartment, one of the more scary places from my childhood when watching this movie. Each player is going to place their color in one of the colored spaces here and place the bikes in the bottom, top, right, and left portions of the board. And then you're going to take all of these, you'll float too, button little uh, balloons here and place them down. Whenever you're taking them off, it's going to go from the top to the bottom and from the left to the right because that is how Pennywise is going to be moving around the board and trying to attack poor innocent little children. There, you're going to have a setup here as well. You're going to take six totem cards, so shuffle all the totem cards together. They're all different colored cards. And then deal out six face down and put them in the fight stack along with one fight card or attack card and separate the attacks from the totems. This over here is the totem deck. You'll place it right on top of the totem cards and then put this fight stack somewhere to the left of the fight stack. So the fight card deck over here. Make sure there's enough room for a discard space for each of the pools here. And you're also going to be getting these die here and the die are going to have different sides. You're going to have hands, you're going to have hearts, and you're going to have balloons. And balloons are basically the things you do not want to roll because it and or Pennywise is going to basically be utilizing those to hunt down the victims in Derry. Over here, you're going to have the start space. You're going to have the uh, Losers Club. And you're trying to get this guy all the way up this track to the winning space. If you can do that, you win the game. However, there's four ways you can lose. If any player's health falls below zero, or bravery, I should say, you're going to lose the game. All the spaces in the evil influence track are filled with victim tokens. And this is the evil evil influence track. If it gets up to here, you instantly lose. And any three locations have no victim tokens remaining. So this would be, these are all victim tokens. And if they go all the way down here, not only can this not be refilled, but that's going to be one. And then you can have another one, two. And then finally three, that would have you lose the game. You want to keep these filled as long as you possibly can. And the last one is if all 13 Pennywise attack cards are in the fight stack, which is very unlikely, but it might, it might happen if all these go in there. And that's pretty much the entire setup of the game. Make sure everybody's health is at five and you have one character for each player. And that these little icons here, these are the uh, I Love Dairy cards. They're basically what are going to help you beat the clown. Place the ones here, the twos here, and the threes here. And now you're ready to begin. And to start the game, you're simply going to take all the die and you're going to roll them. Now, it's not Yahtzee style. You simply roll them and whatever you get is what you get. So let's go ahead and go over a turn. I'll show you what basically can happen. So here we have a bunch of hands, a couple heart, a bunch of hearts, and then one of these nasty, nasty little balloons here. And if we're playing as this character here, the first thing that's going to happen is we're going to use this balloon here. And we're going to go from top to bottom. So we'll take this little token off. Remember, these should all be placed face down, and you should not look at what they are because there's different ones. This here is a victim token. Victims will simply go over here. And the spaces that the balloons pop in are spaces in which players are going to take damage in. So in this case, he's going to lose a bravery. And uh, then after that, that will be done with this guy here. The clown is then going to move to the space he's strongest at. The space he's strong strongest at is the one that has the least amount of balloons. So in this case, he's going to go over here. 
And that's good for certain reasons, because he's going to be able to be attacked in the specific location. Uh, after that, this is pretty much done, but there are other different types of tokens. Let me go ahead and see if I can find one here to show you that will do different things. Like this balloon here is basically going to make Pennywise stronger. You're going to add a fight card and you're going to put it into the fight stack when that happens, making him just a little bit more dangerous and a little bit less likely for you to get what you need during the push your luck phase of the game. Um, otherwise, they're going to just be victims. And basically, when these things, these tracks get filled up, at a certain point, it's going to hit this clown head here, which is going to let Pennywise attack, doing damage to the active player, and then placing the card that did damage into the stack. So in this case, it'd be this one here. And whenever a fight card a card is used to attack, or the attack card is used to attack the specific targeting player, you're going to look: does it have zero or just the A space open? Does it have a B and a C? And depending on what it has, it could be one or all of these fights and then it'll be placed in here the other Wi Fi cards we get added to the stack is if all of these have been removed and shows that little clown symbol there if that happens then another fight card gets added and the player gets attacked again as pennywise can do some serious damage that's it for the balloon phase and then you're going to go ahead and move on to your hearts and hands and you can use these in any way that you want but there's basically two things each of these will do the hands will let you draw cards based on the area you are located in. So in this case, if you're in the blue, purple, or the gray area, you can draw a card with these hands. Or you can pick up a bike in these specific locations as well. The hearts are going to increase bravery to players in the if you're in that area by discarding that specific die. And that will increase health for players. And they will also let you return victims to the space they were taken from. So in this case here, if I had a yellow heart, for instance, I don't even know if there is a yellow heart on some, oh, it's this one here, it's too bad. But if that was a yellow heart, I could take this guy and put him back, which is nice, keeps the victims from piling up. But in this case, let's show you what I can do with this. Because the last action you can do is discard any of these guys to move one space in any direction, provided there is a little uh, a little tunnel going there. So we want to get a card from the Baron. So we're going to go ahead and discard this red heart. And we're then going to go ahead and move Stan over here. And then we're going to discard this, this gray hand, which will let us draw a card from the totem stack. And the totem stack can be re revealed. So we'll show you, go ahead and reveal that. We place it next to the character so that players know what cards they have. And then we're going to go ahead and move again and again. So we'll go ahead and move one and two. And what's good about that is whenever you're in a space that has a colored card that you have, you can then place it for free into the fight stack. And you want to do that for some specific reasons. I'll show you in a second here, but I'm going to place that there. We'll also go ahead and draw a, a card because we're in the blue area. Ah, purple. Actually, we can get away with that. We'll discard this pink hand. We'll move our character over here and place a pink one in this stack here. So that's what we did. We actually stacked up the fight deck, which is what we want to do. That's the main thing we want to do in the game, while also protecting the town as best as we possibly can. Uh, after that, uh, we're pretty much done with our turn. We've spent all of our action die. The only other thing you could do is attack the clown. Now, if the clown was actually in an area you could attack, because you would have to have be you yourself would have to be there as well as at least one other player, then you could attack it and or Pennywise the clown. And let's show you how that works. Well, first of all, we'll be utilizing this deck. And every time you go to fight the clown, you have to shuffle this deck of fight cards, fight and or totem cards. So it's going to be a mix of both, depending on what it puts in here, as well as what you guys, the Losers Club, managed to get in here as well. These are the rewards based on the difficulty. So this is the, this is the difficulty and this is the reward. Difficulty, reward, you get the idea and what it requires in order for you to pull it off. So if we were fighting the clown, let's say we actually had two characters in the space he's at, then we're gonna attempt to achieve these three specific conditions. And the first one says, turn over three encounter cards with different locations, turn over two encounter cards with the paper boat and or the shower cap, and then turn over three encounter cards with the same location. Okay, so that's actually nice. Different locations and same location. Let's see if we can pull it off. So we're going to start flipping them over. We can push our luck as much as we want, but be careful because when a fight card pops up from the clown, we lose everything and we have to deal with whatever he does. So we got one rock in Bev's apartment. We got a shower cap and uh, Keen's pharmacy. Another Bev's apartment, unfortunately. Two encounter cards of the paper boat and or shower cap. So we've got this one. We have two shower caps. We have this one here. But now we need uh, three of the same location. So we need other, another pink or three different ones. So we're going to push our luck a little more. No! So if we actually would have stopped here, we would have gotten to move two spaces up on this track here, getting us closer to victory, our only way to win. But because we failed, we flipped over this guy here. He, the, the clown is actually going to make us lose our totem cards, which royally sucks. 
And we're also going to have to take damage. And this says lower bravery by one in this specific area from either of these characters, because characters can share the brunt of the damage, provided they're in the space that he attacks in. So we'll go ahead and have uh, this character here, Richie, lose one bravery. And then this card is going to also be removed. So that helps us remove some of the nasty attack cards, but we also lost all three of the cards that were just placed in there. And because we didn't successfully break any of these, we are going to leave them there. Basically, these are going to get removed as we are able to successfully accomplish them, and we're going to move our loser track up to successfully defeat the clown. But that's it. You can, it's an optional to try and attack the clown. You don't have to. And after you've gone ahead and rolled your die, uh, activated any of the balloons, activated your hands and or your hearts as much as you'd like, and move around the board as much as you'd like, then you're going to pass and the next player is going to simply go ahead and roll and see what happens. So we got only one balloon. That's not too terrible. It's usually pretty, pretty often we'll only get one. So this would happen with a pink track and so on and so forth. And it continued the game just like that. If you can get your track all the way up here, you win. If you get any of the four losing conditions, you lose. Let's go up now and talk about the game. I think you get a good idea of the game. It evil below. So I didn't mention, but I probably should. The game's 45 minutes to 60 minutes, and I play. I think it plays up to seven total players. Yes, seven players. And the, the game is for ages 18 and up, but I would actually strongly disagree with that rating because realistically, the only thing that's scary in the entire game is the clown that moves around the board, I guess, and the clown on the box. So if your kids can handle just those two images, they can probably play this game. It's a little dark, I guess, and if they really understood the theme or have any idea what the movie is, then maybe you should try and avoid this from them. But I think for the most part, this is just a cooperative game that involves uh, kicking around a clown. Uh, the movies themselves are definitely scary and for mature audiences, but I think I think you'd probably get away with that. Now, don't don't quote me on it. I guess you use your own judgment, I suppose. But uh, this game is basically a die rolling, die management game. You're gonna be rolling die, and you then hoping you get no balloons because if you get a really bad roll in this game, a bunch of balloons pop up. Not only is everybody going to be like, what the heck, Michael, you basically destroyed us, but also it's going to just decimate the board and uh, Pennywise is going to get stronger and stronger. However, you're likely only going to get maybe one, two balloons, sometimes none, because I think a balloon is actually one side. So yeah, you have six die and you got one, uh, one out of six chance. So roughly one, maybe two of them will be a balloon. And after that, you'll be using hands and you will be using hearts to attempt to heal your characters up, save victims, and place totem cards into the fight stack to beat Pennywise. And then it turns into a push your luck style game because if a fight card pops up when you're pushing your luck, you end up getting messed over. But if you're able to get the different matches required for the different spaces to move up your track on the loser track, then you are going to succeed. And knowing your limit is probably an important part. Knowing ratios and math will help in that specific instance because you'll go, oh, okay, we got two nasty fight cards in the stack and there's 22 cards. So it's very likely we'll get this and this and this. Let's go ahead and push to this certain number. And then it comes down to somebody like me going one more one more you know so it has that little push your luck aspect as well the theme does come through it does feel like you're moving around the board avoiding the clown the clown is obviously something you do not want to have rolled you do not want to have him taking the victims and stuff it has a little bit of an eerie or even creepy sort of feel i would say it better represents the first movie than it does the second but the artwork and theme and all that an ip is based on the the new movie which I thought was pretty good. Um, overall, I really enjoyed this game. The artwork is cool. I like all the characters. I think all their abilities, all their specific pass abilities do match their specific characters. And, and that's really nice as well. I mean, for instance, let's look at one of them, Ben Han Hanscom. He is literally uh, a wimpy guy at first, but he become, becomes one of the most brave people. And because of that, he has no maximum hand size. And whenever he fights Pennywise, he draws additional cards, which is really useful. And then you've got somebody that holds the group together, which is Bev over here. And at the beginning of your your turn if you're this player this character if at least one other player is in your location all players in that location gain a bravery which is really useful and then we'll look at somebody else uh, let's look at 
Oh, Stan. Stan says at the end of your turn, if there's a bike in your location, you can pick it up. And you can only have one bike at a time, but it's free to take bikes because Stan is always on a bike in the movies. Really, really cool. They did a really good job with theming this game. Really good job of making choices matter in this game. And yes, there's a little bit of luck when it comes to rolling the die, obviously, as to whether or not you're going to get the balloons or not, and what die you need in order to get what cards, but management is even more important than that. And then, of course, pushing your luck is luck but it essentially it's giving you the choice. Do you only want to go out with one or do you want to push it to two or three? So it always feels like your fault when you do certain things you don't necessarily want to have happen in the game. I really, really enjoyed this game. Played it twice. First time I played it with pretty much the entire player count live. So you can actually go ahead and check that out on our live stream if you would like on Facebook and see for yourself if it's something that you'd be interested in. And another time I played with less players and it still worked just fine. I think it pretty much plays well with any number of players because of how the die work and how the, the clown is going to move on everybody's turn based on what works. Rolls. Really, really like this game. For most of you who don't mind a little bit of luck and don't mind a cooperative game, this one is a solid choice. It Evil Below. Go ahead and check it out down below in the description if you're interested and tell me what you think about this type of game. Should it be 18 and up? Uh, and and if, it, if it should be, why, why? And maybe there's a specific EULA thingy I don't know about. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. And, it and, uh, and as always, you'll float too!